Hi, I'm Shashank Bhargav and you're listening to Three Things, the Indian Express news show. In this episode, we bring you stories from West Bengal, Karnataka and Uttarakhand. We talk about PM Modi's frequent visits to Karnataka and why the BJP is unsure about coming back to power in the state. We also talk about a case of sexual harassment in the Uttarakhand Cricket Association. But first, we talk about West Bengal. Last week on Thursday, the day of the Ram Navmi festival, communal clashes broke out in the Havra district of the state. And a day after that, the region saw more violence taking place. Stones were pelted, shops were ransacked, and cars were vandalized. The entire incident has now led to a political war of words and has raised serious questions about police inaction. When we spoke to Indian Express's Sweetie Kumari, she told us what started this entire thing on Thursday in the Havra district. So, there was a rally organized by Vishwa Hindu Parishad and Anjani Putrasena, which is an NGO who organizes Ram Navmi procession Shobha Yatra, they say, for last 10 years. So, they had planned a Shobha Yatra on Thursday evening, which is Ram Navmi. So, on that day, when they were passing through the minority area, which is near PM Basti and Kazipara, it is alleged that the procession, consisting of more than 5,000 people, were attacked by a group of miscreants and uh, some stones were pelted at them, which triggered a clash between two groups. So, basically, from both sides, stones were pelted and many got injured. Like, no one had this fatal injuries, but definitely some had bruises, some received head injuries. By the evening, the area was completely disturbed, I would say, and the tension continued and it escalated. Several vehicles were torched, public properties were vandalized. Even, you know, some of the people also attacked shops and it was completely turned into a battle zone on that night. Now, one important thing to note is that this Ram Navmi procession was carried out without the official permission of the police. And Sweetie even asked a senior IPS officer about it, about why the procession was allowed to go on if it was not given permission. So basically, on condition of anonymity, he was speaking to Express and he told me that because it is religious thing, a lot of people had gathered. So we allowed the procession. We had already given them do's and don'ts. And there were 100 police personnel and five IPS officers escorting the procession. Now, what went wrong? These people who had organized the procession, it is alleged that they were people who instigated the other group and the clash took place. And people who were part of the procession even told her that the police were there when things were peaceful, but when things turned violent, they were nowhere to be seen. Now, this happened on Thursday. But on Friday, it seems that things were coming back to normal. Though the police were told that there was going to be a big gathering near the mosque in the area. Especially considering that it was Jumma, that is Friday. So, accordingly, definitely the police deployment were much more than what it was on Thursday. And uh, police had put up two barricades, one near Kazipara and one near PM Basti. And in the middle of that is located Shippur Police Station. And the mosque side is towards the PM Basti. So, a massive police force was standing in between of the two barricades, one at the Kazipara, one towards the PM Basti. And uh, there was normal gathering started near around uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Sweetie was there in the area that time. And she says that around 1 o'clock, many people from the Muslim community started gathering in the area to offer namaz. So, suddenly post namaz, at 1.30, stone pelting started from their side. Now, it was only police and press and they started pelting stone at us and it got worst. She says that stones were pelted, long sticks were used to break things and vandalize shops, and those from the press were being targeted as well. And meanwhile, some people who were just passing by had to take shelter wherever they could find it. 
सो इट वॉज स्केरी वेरी डेंजरस वॉट वॉज वेरी सरप्राइजिंग इज दैट पुलिस वॉज मेयर स्पेक्टेटर दीज पीपल वे अब्यूजिंग यूजिंग फाउल लैंग्वेजेस बेल्टिंग स्टोन्स लुकिंग एट पुलिस टारगेटिंग दैम बट दे वे नॉट इक्विप टू हैंडल दैट मॉब she says her sources later told her that the police were ordered not to resort to lathi charge and were only told to appeal for peace now the violence continued till about 2 pm and at that point things were deescalating but then half an hour later it started again we saw that again there was a communal tension in the area and again in similar pattern the mob started pelting stone and this time it was so bad that some of the press people also received bleeding injuries one of our um, other media houses vehicle was completely damaged and even their driver received glass injury and all so it was very bad but police were just standing not using i mean they were not resorting to lathi charge they were not even making any miking announcement appealing for peace and um, it was very surprising and it it appeared that there were no police what is very surprising for me is when you already know that on thursday the situation was so tense that vehicles were tore the area was shut it was communally disturbed on friday situation were brought to normal and there was no additional deployment as in like there were no armed police initially she says that it was only later towards the evening that the police started appealing for peace and started using mics to get people to disperse also on friday there was no prohibitory order it was friday namaz time and the area was so tensed section 144 was not imposed till late evening we were on the spot we could see that people were gathering and uh, even the internet was not suspended so what we saw was those who were stone pelting were at fault definitely on that day but there were people standing on the rooftop of high rise apartments like some ganges apartment nilanjan apartments they were recording these miscreants throwing stones and releasing on internet you know so there was a you know, fault on administration and police side on different labels and they clearly failed to handle or access the situation the other important thing to note is that communal tensions in the area had happened last year as well during this festival and in fact one sub inspector told this to sweety মানে ইন বেঙ্গলি হি ওয়াজ সেইং কি এটা প্রত্যেক বছরই হয় আর প্রত্যেক বছর লাস্ট দু বছর থেকেই আমরা দেখে আসছি আমার তো তিন বছর হলো এখানে ডিউটি আছে আমি তো প্রত্যেকবারই দেখছি এটা তো ওর কিছুক্ষণ স্টোন পেল্টিং হবে নিজে নিজে শান্ত হয়ে যায় সো হি ওয়াজ টেলিং দ্যাট দিস ইজ আ রেকারিং ইভেন্ট দ্যাট উই আর উইটনেসিং ফর লাস্ট টু ইয়ার্স and they'll throw stones and bricks for few hours and then the situation will calm down so we were saying ki ye to regular hota hai last time ho hoyeche ei bar choro hoyeche yes that sub inspector made a point that last year when the area got disturbed the situation was brought to control within an hour and it was normal the next day but this time it had got worse and even you know fearful he was saying that maybe this is going to some other level and we were not prepared for this we thought that there will be some stone pelting for few hours and the situation will go back to normal like every year now as mentioned earlier this incident has led to political parties blaming each other one of the first statements came from chief minister and tmc leader mamta banerji who said that the bjp was trying to create communal tensions in the area because the state mandate has always been against them and people have rejected them several times so they are trying to radicalize people mind and launch communal tension in the area so she was clearly blaming bjp and said that it was a planned thing by bjp on the other hand bjp from the day one said that this was a planned move or a scripted thing by tmc government this is interesting as per bjp after sagar dighi bipol loss tmc has understood that minorities are not now in favor of their party like not in support of tmc because they lost sagar dighi bipol which is a minority area so post that they are trying to impress minority groups 
and that is why it was a screened it was a planned move by tmc government to allow the ramnavmi procession without permission then letting them fight between them and making a political scene out of it and blaming bjp for the same and in between all this the congress party has actually been blaming both the bjp and the tmc the bjp for the communal tensions and the tmc for the police in action sweety says that so far the police have arrested 38 people in the matter and the bjp claims that the police have not been neutral while arresting people because it says most of the people arrested are hindus and when indian express accessed the list it turned out that the majority were from hindu families around 30 of them and when sweety spoke to the families of those arrested both hindus and muslims they told her that those arrested were mere bystanders like the uncle of pinto mola who is an auto driver and that day uh, you know because there was a ram navmi procession in the area and there were no passengers so he had some problem in his toto vehicle he had kept it for repairing work and uh, during that ram navmi procession he was just standing on the road looking at the procession and how people were dancing as per his uncle after the tension he was picked up by the police similarly lot of hindu family said that they were just enjoying the ram navmi procession wearing orange color kurtas having a tilak on their forehead enjoying the dj standing on the road side but later after the incident you know after the communal tension police had to pick up people from the area so they picked up them so police trying to say that they have picked up the right people the families are saying no they were just a part of the procession and police have to show that it is such a big incident such a big talk point across the country that they have to arrest somebody so they have randomly picked up people from both hindu and muslim side also when we talk about the ram navmi celebrations and the clashes that happened during and after it this is actually a recent phenomena and it's not something that used to happen in the past we spoke to hindus we spoke to muslims and they were saying that even during uh, ram mandir demolition time this area had similar population from both sides muslim and hindu and they were living very peacefully so this new trend of fighting between them stole pending this is happening for last 2 3 years only so most of these people agreed that it was basically power struggle and uh, politics was playing a big role in creating communal clashes communal tension in the area and next we talk about karnataka later this week pm modi is going to visit karnataka to launch an event which will mark the 50th anniversary of india's tiger conservation project and this actually will be his eighth visit to the state in the past 4 months the most number of times he has ever visited karnataka and this is particularly noteworthy considering the state elections are just little over a month away in this segment we speak to indian express's kiran parashar about these visits and what data regarding it tells us kiran so how unusual is this frequency of visits by the pm to karnataka So Shashank ahead of assembly elections prime minister Narendra Modi has visited seven times till now and uh, he will be completing his eighth uh, visit and also the sources in the BJP says that he would at least uh, hold uh, more than 20 rallies in the upcoming days so what makes is it's a very unusual is that for example in 2020 when there was no elections Modi visited just once for Karnataka and in 2021 due to covid uh, restrictions he did not visit but he virtually inaugurated few programs but again in 2022 his visits to karnataka started after may and it was an election year and also in 2019 he made six visits to karnataka that was for the campaign of lok sabha elections majorly other than that this year or this time his visits to karnataka is highest from 2014 so it also shows that bjp needs a star campaigner as bs edurappa a long time uh, a face of bjp party in karnataka is uh, not going to contest in any elections in future so prime minister himself has become a star campaigner in karnataka so his visits or frequent visits to karnataka is an unusual trend okay so we see that 
PM Modi visits the state a lot more when there's an election coming up. And now the opposition has been criticizing these visits. Could you talk about why that is? Uh, so his recent visits to Karnataka have been criticized by both uh, Congress and JDS. There are multiple factors to it. So Congress leader Randeep Surjewala very recently questioned why uh, Narendra Modi was inaugurating some of the incomplete projects. For example, a metro line from uh, Kerpuram to Whitefield, which was supposed to be from uh, Bayapnali to Whitefield, was inaugurated. A small stretch was inaugurated. So the Prime Minister Narendra Modi came under severe criticism for that. And as well as he also inaugurated a Mysore Bangalore Expressway, which has been built, but still the service road and other parts are still under construction. But uh, Narendra Modi came and inaugurated uh, the Mysore Bangalore Expressway and also the cost that is involved in these events. And by cost, you mean him traveling down and attending these events along with his cavalcade? And also the amount invested on security and uh, to bring people to the events and programs and all these things that a huge cost is involved. Very recently, Congress MP DK Suresh alleged that BJP leaders were looting crores of money by holding uh, rallies of a prime minister. He cited an example saying that uh, a prime minister who came to Bangalore to inaugurate Kempe Gowda statue and also Terminal 2 of airport and other things. So he said that the Kempe Gowda statue was uh, built at a cost of 59 crores, whereas the expense for the inauguration program was around 30 crores. So he also went on to say that the government initially had claimed that 12 crore was spent erecting pendals for a Modi event and uh, rupees 1 crore billed for uh, the water expenses. So the questions that is being raised by Congress and TDS is that while Modi is being visiting Karnataka state at the cost of so much of money, why he did not visit Karnataka during 2019 and 20 when uh, Karnataka was uh, affected by floods and also during the COVID pandemic. So these are the things which Congress and uh, JDS have been raising for a long time. And Kiran, as someone who writes on politics, what stands out to you about these events and speeches of PM Modi when he visits Karnataka? So if you see the Prime Minister's visit in 2023, most of these visits are official programs. The official programs, like for example, if you see Prime Minister Modi visited uh, National Youth Festival in Hubli this time and he also laid a uh, foundation for multiple rail and road infrastructure in Bangalore and he participated in Indian Energy Week and uh, he participated in Aero India and uh, he also participated in several programs in Belagavi and Shivamogga as well. But the thing is, during his speech, he also ensures that he attacks the opposition. So he adds the political element in the event. So despite all these are government programs and all these are official uh, programs of the government, he makes it a point that he uses it also to attack Congress in particular. And he makes a statement. Congress, परिवार के आगे एस निजलिंगप्पा और वीरेंद्र पाटिल जी जैसे नेताओं का अपमान कैसा किया गया था हर कर्नाटक के लोग जानते हैं अब एक बार फिर कांग्रेस का एक विशेष परिवार के आगे कर्नाटका के एक और नेता का अपमान किया गया है साथियों and also during his visits, especially in 2023, he has participated in road shows where he will be taken on a, a certain or a specific stretch, which also makes a difference when a prime minister holds a road show during these events. Pulo ki barish ke saath wo pradhan mantri ka swagat kar rahe hain. और हमेशा से हम देखते हैं कि प्रधानमंत्री भी उसी ऊर्जा के साथ उसी स्नेह के साथ उनके अभिवादन को स्वीकारते हैं इस रोड शो में बेहद महत्वाकांक्षी परियोजना राष्ट्र एंड किरण वी नो दैट द बीजेपी हैज बीन ट्राइंग टू मेक इन रोड इन टू साउथ इंडिया फॉर सम टाइम नाउ बट इट हैजेंट रियली बिन सक्सेसफुल इन डूइंग दैट सो दैट वे इट सी इज कर्नाटका एज अ गेट वे टू दैट एज अ गेट वे टू इट्स एंट्री इन टू साउथ इंडिया एंड विच इज वाई द स्टेट इज सो इम्पोर्टेंट फॉर द पार्टी and you write that bjp right now 
is not confident that it will come back to power in the state. You've mentioned that they don't have B.S. Yadurappa with them this time. And he had resigned back in 2021. And he was someone who had really helped the BJP grow in the state over the years. So talk about that aspect and how it is likely to affect the party. So after three decades, this is the first time in Karnataka, BJP is going for an assembly elections without B.S. Edurapa as its chief minister's face. B.S. Edurapa has been a grassroots leader in Karnataka and he is also one of the stars of BJP and also a star campaigner. So for the first time, the BJP is also going without chief minister's face in Karnataka. So at the same time, there is no mass leader for BJP which is also keeping them in certain amount of apprehensions that what will be the future or like how the party would uh, go to the elections. So here, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, as well as Union Minister Amit Shah, visits to Karnataka has increased over a period of time. Especially after June 2022, the visit of Narendra Modi and Union Minister Amit Shah to the state has gradually increased. So this is one of the concerns for the people within the BJP as well. And in the end, we talk about a case which has shook the Uttarakhand Cricket Association. Last week, a father of a 15-year-old girl registered an FIR against Narendra Shah, a former office bearer of the Cricket Association of Uttarakhand. In the complaint, the father said that Narendra Shah, on a call, asked his daughter for sexual favours and also threatened to destroy her career if she told anyone about it. Now, this call went viral online and soon Shah was booked under the POXO Act, that is the Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act. To know more about this incident, my colleague Utsha Sermon speaks to Indian Express's Avnish Mishra in this segment. So Avnish, could you begin by talking about who Narendra Shah is and why he has been an important figure in Uttarakhand cricket? Uh, this guy, Naren Shah, last month he was appointed as the co-convener of uh, women's cricket in Uttarakhand. Along with that, he already holds the position of uh, secretary of the Chamoli District Cricket Association. And he's also uh, the coach of an international women cricketer who plays for India as well as uh, for some other teams also. So definitely he's an important uh, member of uh, cricket in Uttarakhand because uh, he's part of the Cricket Association of Uttarakhand which is the highest governing body when it comes to cricket in the state. And that is why when uh, his audio recording became viral, there was a lot of a storm in the field of cricket in Uttarakhand. Right, and this audio recording is the reason why he was charged under the POXO Act. So tell us what we know about this recording. So there was an FIR registered against this guy and the complainant in that FIR was the father of a 15-year-old girl who is part of this academy run by Narendra Shah. And in that complaint, uh, the father has alleged that uh, earlier this week, there was uh, some uh, practice session at the academy. And after the session, when this girl went to her room, there was a call from Nareen Shah on her friend's number. He wanted to talk to her. And then the girl recorded the conversation in which uh, Nareen Shah was uh, making uh, offensive comments. He was asking for sexual favors, making promises that uh, he'll make sure as he gets to play more often, uh, making her promises and asking for sexual favors. I mean, I cannot tell the exact words used, but... But uh, it was uh, highly offensive and uh, questionable. And after this recording went viral, uh, there were reports that Shah tried to take his own life, right? Yeah, after this call went viral, uh, last Friday, Naren Shah allegedly consumed some poisonous substances and after that, he was admitted to the ICU ward of a local hospital. And uh, days after that, uh, on Monday or Tuesday, there was uh, this FIR registered at the Nehru Colony Police Station under which uh, Shah's uh, Cricket Academy, which is called the Little Master Cricket Academy, that academy situated uh, under this police station jurisdiction. And uh, the FIR was registered under Section 354A, which is for sexual harassment, and 506, which is for criminal intimidation. These were the IPC sections, along with the Section 
7 and 8 of the POXO Act and the Section 3 of Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribe Prevention of Atrocities Act because this girl belongs from the Scheduled Caste and it is also alleged that this guy Nareen Shah was uh, making casteist comments at her saying that uh, you are from a lower caste and you do not deserve to be playing or being with the people from the other caste and I am the one who is allowing these things and he was using all those things to ask for uh, sexual favors. Okay, Ravanesh, uh, in the FIR, the girl's father mentioned that apart from himself, uh, Shah also asked for sexual favors for two other office bearers. So have these other two office bearers also been apprehended? So, the complaint which the father has submitted to the police, there is a mention of these two people who are office bearers of the Cricket Association of Uttarakhand. He's saying that uh, Nareen Shah keeps putting pressure on her and saying that you have to like uh, give sexual favors to these two people. But name of these two people are not in the list of the accused. The only person who is made accused in the FIR is Narinder Shah. However, the content of the FIR, which is the complaint from the father, that itself has a mention of these two people. However, I was also talking to some of the officials at the Cricket Association of Uttarakhand. The spokesperson of the CAU, Vijay Pratap Malla, he denied that uh, there was any involvement of the other two people named uh, by the father. He's saying that uh, their names were added as part of a conspiracy. And while there is a clear evidence of the involvement of Narain Shah in such activities, there is no concrete evidence against the other two people as of now. And that is why action has been taken only against Narain Shah, who has been removed from his position at the Cricket Association of Uttarakhand. However, the Chamoli District Cricket Association is yet to take a call on his future at the association. Right. And this is not the first case against Shah, right? A former chairperson of the uh, State Commission uh, for the Protection of Child Rights has claimed that three other girls also complained against Shah. So talk to us about that. Yeah, uh, I talked to Usha Negi, who is the former chairperson of the State Commission for the Protection of Child Rights. And she told me that at least three other girls who were earlier part of the academy have approached her. And after that, she met uh, Dehradun SSP and uh, SP Crime uh, with their complaints. And she told me that the police officials have assured them of a police case and strict action against those people. But uh, as of now, no separate FIR has been registered. But in the future, there is a possibility of more FIRs being registered and probably those FIRs will be clubbed together so that uh, the investigation can proceed further. You were listening to Three Things by The Indian Express. Today's show was edited and mixed by Suresh Pawar and was produced by Utsha Sermon and me, Shashank Bhargav. If you like the show, then do subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also recommend the show to someone you think will like it. Share it with a friend or someone in your family. It's the best way for people to get to know about us. You can tweet us at Express Podcasts and write to us at podcast at indianexpress.com. 